These guitars bug me. Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglodytes Guitar Show. Fair warning if you don't like creepy critters. This might not be the episode for you because we're featuring crazy bug guitars. So let's kick things off here with model number LP Bugs. This unorthodox Les Paul standard was birthed in the year 2000. You can tell it's got some historic specs to it due to the fact that we've got the ABR1 bridge and our black bonnet style knobs. So perhaps it could be an R8, R9, or RO. But quite shockingly here, we just have a natural clear coat finish with a two-piece flame maple top, but we've got these bugs drawn all over it. We've got our little green and blue dude over here, we've got our friendly tiger-striped beetle, kind of a scary hairy zebra pattern guy here, playing a drum, I guess. <laughs> little doofy friendly guy with blue eyes, and his yellow lady friend over here. And we're not even going to talk about that one, or this big red behemoth over here. But you'll notice that's not all that special with this one, it actually has black binding. Gotta remember, the year 2000, Gibson was not throwing black binding on everything. You also have that on our fretboard, and take a look at these inlays. They're made out of abalone, probably trying to play off the iridescence of some beetles. Now, unfortunately, we do not have a photo of the back of this guitar, but we can assume it's mahogany and natural. But if there's any more creepy crawlies on it, we'll just leave that to our imagination. But you're probably curious, what's our story behind this? Before I tell you that, we need to paint the story. You gotta remember, the official Gibson Custom Shop doesn't open until very late 1993. Took them a while to figure out exactly what they were wanting to do. So just remember, this is like six years into it, they're experimenting yet, and realistically, having fun. So apparently there was a Gibson Custom Direct service where you could pay a membership fee of approximately 500 bucks to give you access to the rarest of the rare, you know, these weird things the Custom Shop was producing. But this particular guitar, Gibson commissioned an artist, Carol Paulson, as part of their Art of the Guitar program to paint them not one, but two bug guitars. One being this Les Paul, and apparently an ES5. ES5s are pretty fascinating guitars with triple P90 and or humbucker pickups. Honestly, that one is pretty cool. But according to Chris's guitar's website, that ES5 was damaged, never ended up getting sold until it was put into a charity auction. And apparently he got it from an IRS auction, where the original owner was forced to sell a whole bunch of his highly prized guitars. Let's talk about the art of guitar a little bit more. I'm not going to say I ever heard of it before, so I honestly don't have the most information for you, but there appears to have at least been two of the series, one and two, but it was part of the Animazing Gallery that was apparently auctioned off on Yahoo auctions back when that was a thing in USA. Still is highly prevalent in Japan, but you got people like the Carol Paulson that we just learned about with the bugs, but we also have Matt, Leroy, Derek, and John Entwistle over here, where they produce 20-some guitars. I was able to find this old pamphlet where we can see some of Rick's work. Looks like maybe some seashells and some other weird psychedelic stuff. And a better photo of that other one that we've seen that was a Neiman creation. So this confirms that there were 25 one of a kind in the second batch, and they do mention the ES5 Switchmaster here, and how right Henry J was here. And oh, hooray, this document has some more. Here's a Les Paul, Les Paul, okay. And I kind of like this flaming marshmallow man type thing going on here. But nay, there we go. I thought that name sounded familiar. The Homer Simpson guitar, we've actually documented that in a separate episode. I love it when things finally start to make sense, because the 2000s era of Gibson could be really confusing because they weren't documented that well, sometimes series get segmented, it's nice to have it all make sense again. Now unfortunately, most of these seem to have been lost to time, we weren't really documenting things on the internet as heavily as we are today. So if anybody happens to have like the complete list of stuff, feel free to let me know, we might need to make another episode on them. The website does seem to be up to date, but I've known about this thing for quite some time, so I'm not sure if it's still available at his $7,000 asking price, but feel free to check it out at chrisguitars2.com. But before we continue, we need to have a word from our sponsor, Sweetwater. I've been shopping with Sweetwater for over 10 years. If you're looking to buy music gear, such as guitars, banjos, ukuleles, DJ equipment, or even the computers that you need to help you create all that. They are your place and they're happy to ship it to your door or you can visit their Fort Wayne, Indiana location. And even if you're not in the market for anything, they've got a great website to window shop because you can see each individual guitar that they're selling, take a look at their top, the weight, and if you are local, they do events all the time. Thank you Sweetwater for sponsoring tonight's episode. Now let's get back to the guitars. But my friends, I've known about that one for a while, I've just been saving it for the right episode, and this thing popped up on Reaver four months ago that made me cover it. Alright, we got some sort of a beautiful Les Paul Custom here, right? 
Nope, it's another Bugs model, but this time it's an SG Custom, and I think it looks way better than the Les Paul. Something about maybe the mahogany color of the wood grain versus the maple kind of works well, because, you know, normally you associate big creepy crawlies climbing on a tree or something, and that's what this more so looks like. But you've got this, like, stick bug over here playing a double bass, I guess, that's just tiny. <laughs> He's got some maracas over here in his hand. That's just silly. What does this guy got? A little keyboard? I've never noticed that before today but you've got a clear pick guard over top of it you've got the triple humbuckers all the normal blingage that these reissue sgs normally have but then when we flip over to the back side we've got a really cool praying mantis with colorful wings playing the bongos but what was really fascinating to me is the fact that we have a little bit of white right here sg customs normally when you see them out in the wild they're white but the whole sprayed neck and heel aspect of this one's very fascinating so there we go, three creepy crawly guitars, but since we've got some time left tonight, let's talk about some other bug guitars. We've talked about these on the show before, but it is a classic from 2009, the original Black Widow Les Paul. Apparently Kansas City Vintage had number one of the 25 made. I'm not sure how long ago they had this thing, but I would like to add one of these to my collection. I regret selling the one I did. We've seen number one and number 25 now show up. It was kind of a whole dilemma because after I made the video saying that it was stolen, a viewer of the show was actually the one who won the eBay auction previously, so he reached out to the person that it rightfully belonged to, and in a roundabout way, I think the guitar got back to him. So there was a happy ending to that story. But anyways, this one doesn't have a big creepy spider on the top of it, it just has the red vibes everywhere. A very spooky headstock. And then what we're really looking for here are Black Widow Spider on a Stinger. Super cool guitars. They might look like a Les Paul Custom, but technically more like an R7 because they do not have the binding on the back. But yet they still have all the other custom appointments like Mother of Pearl block inlays with ebony fretboards. If you're talking creepy crawlies, you can't forget about the Les Paul Centipede. They utilize a blue burst finish with yellowed binding, all gold hardware, but use a red lacquer over top of the headstock and give you this little friendly guy on the back so you understand why the colors are the way they are. This is one of those models, I did not like it when it first came out, but it kind of grows on you with time. I did buy one and it arrived broken. It actually did finally show up for sale on eBay again, but the seller who got it at auction didn't realize that it had been repaired and I never saw it show back up after they took that down. So who knows where that guitar is now? Continuing on, we've got Spider-Man guitars. Not quite the same creepy crawlies out there, but there's two different versions of the amazing Spider-Man web slinger version. So you got the one that's signed by John and then the other half were signed by Stan Lee. So technically there's two you want in your collection if you're a Spider-Man fan. You get your spider knobs. It's just a, a screwed on graphic. Honestly, I'm not a big fan of these. But they do have the interesting inlay on their fretboard over here. And if these three aren't enough spiders for you, there's another one on the headstock. But then the 2002 Spider-Man movie Les Paul is absurdly expensive if you can find a real one. I think it mainly comes down to that was a very popular movie and there were very few of these things made. It's no longer just a screwed on graphic, it's like a actual graphic underneath the finish that looks pretty nice. But if that's not enough for you, we have documented a Fender Mustang Spider-Man guitar. I've got to tell you, I really love that thing. And I'm usually more of a Gibson guy. I think this pulls off the vibes way better. Because it's got the blending of the elements of the competition stripe as one of the web slingers. And your web shot here is a metallic paint. You've got your spider over here. You've got a little spidey there. And then you've got your web. You've got the continuation of that on the headstock. Your Mustangs are going fast. This is one of those cooler made in Japan exclusive guitars. Unfortunately, nothing too much fun on the back, but you do have your spider sense logo. Thankfully, these are photos that I took. So that means there's a whole video that you can watch of that thing if you want to. But if you need even more legit spiders in your life, what about this Nam Show display piece from 2020? It's one of the very early Rick Heinrichsen creations as the master carver for Gibson. So it had spider web sound hole design with a completely open back that scared a lot of people that it would just break or something. But according to him, it was very secure. But then there is a heel cap carving of a woodlouse spider. A lot of the web was actually finished checking. And just kind of like the Web Slinger 1, he did a similar purple web design on our fretboard. And it's just one of those designs, the more you see it, the more you enjoy it. I actually interviewed Rick about this guitar. So if you want to learn more about the history of that one, feel free to check into that. 
And our next one is actually really cool. The only downside is I couldn't find that many photos of it. Otherwise, I would have featured it earlier this episode. But these are real beetles that this guy went all over the world to collect. He's like an entomologist. He's got the website whatsthatbug.com. And he just encased them in this clear epoxy guitar, which the effect is actually quite stunning. Because remember, I was talking about the iridescence of some of these beetles. It's kind of like a flame pattern in a roundabout way. If you like bugs, that is. It almost looks like he puts beetles in the neck, too. <laughs> And this is the only other photo that we have to go off of. So you can tell the back of the bugs are facing on the front and the back. So no matter how you're viewing this one, it'll look great. But then look at your fretboard. I really love these intricate inlays that he's got going on here. That's almost more impressive than the actual beetle harvesting. But while researching bug guitars, I came up with this beetle. It doesn't look like it's an actual guitar, but yeah, it could be. Looks like it's currently set up as a lefty. We've got our toggle switch down here, but I mean, we've seen surfboard guitars and other weird things. Somebody could theoretically build that. But then there was this butterfly guitar that reminded me of these. Yeah, those Daisy Rock guitars. They made a whole bunch of them. We talked about them in the Powerpuff Girls episode. They're not necessarily the best. They are littered in Goodwill auctions across the country, but it's technically a bug. And of course, we can't talk about bug guitars without Bugs Bunny. This is a pretty cool super strat, I would say. Slanted humbucker and all. Classic Looney Tunes design. Or perhaps you prefer just the literal bunny head. <laughs> if you think that's crazy, there is a Gibson version of this, of the Playboy bunny head, which I would say is designed a little bit better than this Bugs guitar, but yeah, yeah whatever. Everybody has their own taste. All right, troglodytes, I hope you didn't get too creeped out. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you tomorrow on the next one. Take care. If you enjoyed tonight's episode, consider subscribing. I post videos like this every day. And you might even enjoy this next one.